heart, which means you may think that you are playing Christian, but if in your heart you think you could utter the words that show as if you're serving God, but in the, in the depths of your heart and the way that you live your life, you're really worshiping yourself and anything else. Just because you've professed Christianity doesn't mean you are. Because even though works don't save you, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And because the main ministry of the Holy Spirit compels us to live um, separately from the world. Yes, we are called to live in the midst of the world and engage culture, but there's nothing about the Holy Spirit that says you're meant to look like culture. So if you think that you can say you love Jesus and not have to repent. John, through the words of Jesus, is saying, no otherwise. You will have no other God but me. And those who commit adultery on me, no matter of your eschatological views, will be present during the tribulation. Because I'm the one who searches the mind and the heart. If you've held any pieces of your life apart from me, knowing that what it means to come to know Christ as your Savior means to lay down your life for him. If you're holding away from him, maybe we should reconsider where our commitments really are. And then he moves on and says, but to the rest of you in Thyatira, to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold to this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden. I do not lay on you any other burden. Only hold fast what you have until I come. He says, I, I know the difficulties that you're going through. I know that you're in the midst of a, of a world that is compelling you to compromise. But he's saying, hold fast. Hold fast and hold fast the truth. While, while fake prophetesses may be telling you that you could have it all, know what they're really saying. Know that in them saying that you could have it all, both the love of God and your sin, you're actually losing it all. And then when you consider who God is, all of a sudden we remember that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is he who not only gave up everything, but he actually is everything. So it says, hold on and hold fast to what's true. Know that Jesus, our Lord, gave his life for you and know that he's calling you to Christ-likeness. Know that he's calling you to mission. Know that he's calling us to love him more and to do that more and more and then to love each other more and to not water that down for the sake of palatability. Because the gospel of Jesus is offensive but it's only offensive to who we are as sinners. And rather than take away the guilt of that sin, let it fuel us to pursue more of Jesus. Hold fast what you have until I come. 26, and he says, The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I'll give authority over the nations, and he'll rule them with a rod of iron as when earthen pots are broken in pieces. And, and, and as myself have received authority from the Father, hold on. Because even though I know you're going to be going through harder and harder days, hold on. And know that because our God is who he says he is and he's going to do exactly what he set out to do. And what Jesus is talking about here is the fact that I promise you I will return and I will reign this glorious messianic reign. And if you hold on, reign with me. There's this promise in scripture that says we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. And he says one day this will come into a split glorious fruition. Just hold on. And then he says, and I will give him the morning star. And this language of saying, I'll give him the morning star is beautiful because it gives us this picture where Jesus knows it's going to get harder and it's going to get darker 
But one of my favorite lines from the, the Batman movies was where it says, it always is darkest before the dawn. And God, hard days making fun of me because that's really cheesy. But that is so true. Things are only going to seem worse and worse. But you know what? Jesus is the morning star. He is the sun. He is light. Everything is going to come into light in him. And he's saying, I'm going to give you this. But most of all, I'm going to give you myself. Because like I said, you may have thought that you wanted it all in terms of wanting both sin and God. And you may think that committing to Jesus means giving up too much. But remember that Jesus is the one who not only gave up everything, even his own life. He actually is everything. And he's saying, I am giving myself to you. Know how valuable that is. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Whoever has an ear to hear, know this truth. Our God is good. Know this truth that, yes, it is hard out there. Yes, this calling to Christianity means standing up. One of the things I talked about in our small groups over dinner is that Christianity is, is interesting because it doesn't just call us to conflict. It doesn't just call us to these confrontations. It actually, in a lot of ways, compels. And it, it, it creates confrontation. Because Jesus is revealing to us that, yes, the world and we are broken. And the only way to restore this brokenness is to show us how messed up things are. And he's calling us to love a world that seems to hate us. But let us love people so radically that they begin to wonder why. And in terms of radical love, I mean radically different. We are not called to love the world outside by being just like them. We are called to engage them. So if you're not engaging them, you're missing a piece of the puzzle. But if you're engaging them and you're not actually living a life for Jesus, you're missing a piece of the puzzle. Let your lights shine before men. And when you engage the world outside, let Christ's light and love be reflected through you so that they could be drawn to him. We are not trying to make ourselves look cool as Christians, but we are trying to bring glory to the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who deserves it all, the one who maintains us and sustains us through the hardest times of our days, our beautiful morning star. Amen? Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day where we can come to know you more, where we could worship you in song and also go to you in scripture. I thank you for the picture that we have here today of, of what it means to stand up for you, even when it, it's scary because we, there are just risks involved. But I pray that we would take those risks. I pray that we wouldn't be scared of the things that we might have to give up for you because you are already gave it all you paid it all and let us respond to the love that you've already shown let us grow in the likeness of your son jesus and let us show jesus to the world that desperately needs to see you forgive us for ever thinking that we could do this in a compromised manner lord let us begin walking for you and pursuing you in spirit and in truth we thank you. We love you. All as you pray in the name of your son. Amen. Second Corinthians says this. <clears throat> Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. 
for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I'd like to call on the ushers, please. <clears throat> 